Hello. Hello. That was a funny hello. Hello. Welcome to a, another screencast in the Mix and Flow of Matter unit. Uh, the last one, as I mentioned, was probably by far and large the most important uh, screencast of the unit. Now we're going to take the next leap and start talking about other principles of fluids and relate those principles back to the particle model of matter. So here we go. What is viscosity? Viscosity is a measure of how quickly a fluid can flow. I'll say that again. Viscosity is a measure of how quickly a fluid can flow. Fluids that have a low viscosity flow fast. And they flow fast because they don't have very many, very many uh, internal resistance or friction happening. They don't have very much internal resistance or friction happening. If it's got a low viscosity, it flows. It flows fast. I know that's maybe hard to get in your head, but low viscosity flows quickly. Fluids with a high viscosity, they flow slowly because they have a greater amount of internal resistance or friction within the particles. Okay? So we can do a, something called a bubble test. And a bubble test is where we observe the viscosity of different fluids as a bubble travels through them. And a more viscous solution will have a bubble that travels slowly. Uh, a less viscous solution will have a bubble that travels quickly through it. Okay, when we, and when we talk about how viscous a fluid is, normally we compare it to another fluid. For example, cooking oil is more viscous than water. Cooking oil is less viscous than water, wh whichever it is. Okay. Can we compare some of these ones? Which has a lower viscosity or which is less viscous? Remember, less viscous means flows faster. Water, cooking oil. Honey or pop? Syrup or shampoo? Rubbing alcohol or motor oil? Okay, this should be what you picked. Those four would have a lower viscosity. Water, pop, rubbing alcohol, and syrup would have the lower of the two viscosity. Flip it around. Which one has a higher viscosity between the two? Water or shampoo? Which one flows slower? Rubbing alcohol and cooking oil. Syrup and honey. Motor oil and pop. Ready? These four should have the higher viscosity. Shampoo, cooking oil, honey, and motor oil. Okay. Now, why do they have a higher viscosity is the question you should be asking yourself. And this is because of the particles. So particles with lots of internal resistance, if there's lots of friction between the particles, these particles are tightly packed and they don't move around each other very easily. And because they don't move around each other too easily, they have a higher viscosity. Okay? Lots of internal resistance, tightly packed particles, high viscosity. Other side, fluids with little or no resistance or friction. They have particles that are loose or less packed. And these particles will move easily past or around one another. Therefore, they have a low viscosity. Little resistance, particles that are loose, low viscosity. Okay. To change or alter the viscosity of a substance, you need to change the temperature. And when you change the temperature, you increase the energy within particles. The spaces between the particles will increase. And if the space between increases, then therefore it is more loose, less tightly packed, and will flow faster. Here's an example. I have syrup and some nice hot fluffy pancakes. I pour my syrup on top of the pancakes. What happens to the syrup? The syrup will actually become less viscous because it is being warmed by the pancakes themselves and therefore will flow faster. Another example, motor oil. I go to change my oil. I just turned off my car. What am I going to notice? I'm going to notice that the oil coming out of my car is flowing quite quickly. If I add brand new oil to the car and it's a hot vehicle, the oil would become less viscous because the vehicle is actually heating up the oil 
causing it to be less viscous. Both the pancake example and the oil example both have to do with the space between the particles and how the space between is increasing, therefore changing the viscosity. Why do we have three different types of oils, or numerous types of oils then? We have a 5W20, a 5W30, a 10W30. What on earth does this all mean? Well, if you ever have to go change the oil, if you ever go with mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or uncle to wherever, and you're picking out oil, you should know that the viscosity rating on the oil containers are from low to high viscosity. So lower numbers would be low viscosity, higher numbers would be high viscosity. And the numbers that usually are 0, 5, 10, 15, and 25 have a letter W beside them designating their winter viscosity. In the summertime, you can select an oil that has a higher viscosity, like 20W30, let's say, because the overall heat of the car and the ambient or surrounding heat of the air from the, the hot summer will increase the uh, particle spaces and cause a uh, increase in the fluidity of the oil and therefore the oil becomes less viscous in the summertime by itself. Okay? In the winter time if you add a thick oil and it's cold outside a decrease in temperature will cause those particles to come closer together that will increase the friction and it will flow slower it will become more viscous. So if you select an oil that is already uh, high in viscosity and you put it in your car in the winter time. Your car is going to have a heck of a time trying to start because the viscosity is so high within the engine that the engine can't overcome that viscosity. So, you add an engine oil in the winter time that has a lower viscosity, like 5W30, so that it, even though it freezes in the winter time, it's not as thick to begin with, so to speak. Okay? Hope that makes sense because it's a very important practical solution or, or scenario where viscosity plays a role. So that is the screencast on viscosity. Uh, I hope you learned something and I hope you're starting to realize how particles can influence properties of fluids.